Hello everyone, I am Sir Shakti, Assistant Professor from the Department of Nutrition and Dietetics, Bardhyar Arts and Science College for Women, Devya Kurchi. Now we are going to see about peptic ulcer. Let's see about what is peptic ulcer. As I said before, it is an open spot that happens in the inside of the stomach and the upper portion of the small intestine. So it is happens in the inside of the stomach, not the outside of the stomach and the upper portion of the small intestine. So it happens only in two areas, only in the stomach and in the small intestine areas. It does not happen in nose, eyes or nothing. So it happens in the in, inside of the stomach and the small intestine. It has the two types, one, one is gastric ulcers and the next one is duodenal ulcer. So what is gastric ulcer it is the ulcer that happens in the stomach and the duodenal ulcer is happens in the small intestine it does not happens in the large intestine this it is happens in the small intestine intestine so this is the schematic representation of the peptic ulcer so here we see gastric ulcer and this is the duodenal ulcer so this is the small intestine and this is the stomach let's see about what are the causes and how it happens to us first thing is Infection with the bacterium Hylobacter. So, if we have a direct contact with the person who was affected by this bacteria, it is easily transported to us because through the saliva because it is a direct to direct person contact. The next reason is long term uses of non steroid anti inflammatory drugs. It releases the acid, some which is uh, not good for our stomach. The next is stress and spicy foods. If we stress a lot and if we eat spicy foods, that's, that also causes pe peptic ulcer. Let's see about the symptoms. So if we have peptic ulcer, these are the symptoms caused to us. So first is burning stomach pain. So if we eat any spicy food or any citric foods, the stomach will burn. And then next is feeling of fullness or bloating. So if every time and every day we feel like bloating, we, don't, we didn't eat anything, but we always feel bloating and the feeling of fullness, we didn't eat that much food. The next tolerant, intolerance of fatty foods. If we eat any fatty foods like fried foods or any fatty fishes or anything, so it doesn't uh, support us, it, uh, we immediately take vomit and heartburn so heartburn the next nausea feeling faint and nausea or vomiting so we vomit every day and every time we after consume food and uh, next is feeling faint if even though if we eat food we always feel very tired and the other symptoms are what vomiting or vomiting blood so vomiting is common in our everyday because if we eat some uh, allergic foods we uh, suddenly vomit but in peptic ulcer we vomiting blood so it's not about the food it's about the blood we vomit blood so that is that is appears in red or sometimes in black the next symptoms are dark blood in stools or stools that are in black so normal blood stool color is uh, yellow sometimes it uh, it is green if we consume green leafy vegetables but in peptic ulcer up, it is appears in dark blood or black. The other symptoms are trouble breathing and unexplained weight loss and appetite changes. So trouble breathing, we are unable to breathe easily. Then the other symptoms is unexplained weight loss. If a patient have thyroid, the common symptoms are weight loss. In, in peptic ulcer also, the common symptom is weight loss. The other uh, symptoms is appetite changes uh, because we are we vomit every day so the appetite changes may be appear uh, this is the schematic representation of the symptoms fatigue every day we feel very tired and heartburn so loss of appetite we don't feel f uh, appetite every time full of fullness next vomiting if we consume any meal we suddenly vomit then nausea uh, very tired very confusing stage then bloating uh, bloating means we, our stomach feels full every day then burping, sudden burping, then weight loss, unexplained weight loss, then dull pain, then burning. And what are the complications? Some people uh, lethargically leave it as it is because they didn't treat, they didn't go to hospital, they didn't check to doctors. So what are these complications? What happens if we have peptic ulcer? The first is internal bleeding. So as I said before, it happens in the stomach. So it happens inside of our body. So every time we eat any spicy foods or any uh, acid foods, the blood uh, leaks in the stomach. So bleeding can occur as slow blood loss that leads to anemia. So what happens if blood losses we, turns into anemia? The next is so blood transfusion so if we lost uh, if we lost lot of blood we we are unable to uh, do any regular works and next is a black or bloody vomit or black or bloody stools as uh, we saw in the symptoms a hole in your stomach wall 
so a peptic ulcer can eat a hole so which means if we uh, take in uh, white water pipe ex as example if your water is flow in a pipe what happens if we put a hole so it uh, spreads through the entire place so just like that the in our body the intestine also uh, crosses the transport blood what happens if if there is a hole in our in our intestine the blood leaks entire the body and the and it also causes some spores it turns into a large hole obstruction which means obstacles so it uh, causes a block so we cannot eat a lot because it causes a block in passage of food so in the digestive tract it causes a block we don't eat that much that's why we feel full of fullness and next we easily vomit and gastric ulcer studies have shown that your people infected with, with the h pylori have an increased risk of gastric ulcer so if we have an ulcer we can leads to gastric ulcer next prevention how we can prevent peptic ulcer first is avoid tobacco products then avoid alcohol tobacco and alcohol is not good for our health it's a common it's a common thing we should avoid then next use caution with aspirin and nsaids so if we take any aspirins and any nsaids we should uh, limit the consumption next don't ignore your ulcer symptoms protect yourself from infections by washing hands regularly and consuming foods that we have been cooked thoroughly so if we ignore the symptoms it if we left untreated it comes sometimes death then this is about the direct contact if we direct contact with the person who was affected by that bacteria that leads to food contamination and then that comes to us then we are affected by ulcer then this is about the dietary habits what are the things we should avoid and what are the things we should include first the things we should avoid is coffee chocolate spicy food alcohol acidic foods such as citrus fruits and tomatoes then caffeine these are the main things we should avoid in our food if we have peptic ulcer next what are the things we should mainly include so first is cauliflower or cabbage radishes apple and all berries then uh, bell peppers bell peppers is nothing but capsicum and then carrots broccoli leafy greens then probiotic rich foods so cauliflower and cabbage or it's a bland uh, it's a bland food it doesn't have any taste pleasures such as sour or sweet or nothing then when the radishes like the same same as cauliflower then apple apple and all berries these are good for health then bell, bell peppers bell peppers are not so hot as spicy as uh, other green chilies next carrot carrot is also good for health then broccoli leafy greens and probiotic foods so probiotic what is probiotic it is a bacteria that is present in our stomach so it is a good bacteria that uh, helps to pro that helps to give a healthy stomach and a healthy uh, digestion so some examples of probiotic foods are pickles yogurt and sauerkraut and kimchi so these are the main foods we should include in our diet so let's see a uh, sample menu about Uh, sample menu for the peptic ulcer patient uh, in morning if we take uh, uh, milk a uh, cow's milk that may cause uh, intolerance some because some people have lact lactose intolerance so instead of cow's milk we can take a vegetable milk or uh, soy milk or uh, uh, apple so apple juice i'm saying so if we take instead of cow's milk we can take uh, plant milk and apple juices so i mean fruit juices which is non citric and vegetable juices so we can take this kind of drinks and for early morning we, we can take um, idli as normal and uh, instead of a normal white idli we can take a green leafy vegetable idli so if we grind uh, we should grind the green leafies and mix with the flour so that is uh, green leafy idlis then for the side dish we can take is a sambar which is uh, less in spicy and for the mid morning we can take a whole fruit like uh, sitapal papaya and uh, banana and apple with uh, this these fruits are non citrus fruits we can include it as in our diet so for the sorry rice cauliflower kurma or cabbage sambar like that and for uh, side dish we can take a whole boiled egg so we don't omelet it or scramble nothing that a whole boiled empty egg then for the evening snacks we can consume like sundas like uh, those and up and we should avoid all fatty foods until we cure it and for the 
dinner we can take chapati also chapati or dosa like a uh, whole wheat grains foods we can take for the side dish we can take we need dal it's like bland foods and for the uh, but for the bed time we can consume any plant based milk this this is a sample menu for peptic constipation if we take a bland diet for the peptic constipation the patient will recover very very soon and they can uh, uh, consume many foods after that so let's see in summary about peptic ulcer it is so that happens in our stomach and it is caused by non uh, it is caused by non steroidal anti anti inflammatory drugs and poor dietary habits the symptoms are heart burning stomach pain vomiting nausea fatigue and those and all the prevention is good dietary habits and uh, and we should see the doctor if we left untreated what i'm trying to say is food is the medicine and medicine is not the food so if we consume a good food we can leads to a healthy life thank you